Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Z here, and today I'll be looking at a little game called Halo. Now, Halo Reach released last year, and to most, it may just look like an AC version of a game that came out 10 years ago. Nothing's changed. But what you have to realize is that over the last decade, the entire gaming industry has changed dramatically. And in many ways, it is Halo more than any other franchise that has defined this change. Even if you see Halo as a nerd game in space, chances are, whatever games you are playing, have its influence coursing through its veins. To understand things, you have to cast your mind way back to 2001. Let me help you out. The PlayStation was brand new. People still used the D-pad to move around. Shooters lived ex almost exclusively on the PC. Online was for computers only. And the console market, while large, still took a backseat to the PC market. And then, there came Halo. To be sure, Bungie's game had its predecessors. GoldenEye for the N64 and Medal of Honor for the PlayStation 1 were both successful and beloved shooters on consoles, but they were the exception, not the rule. Even then, neither game had a good way to move and shoot at the same time. You had to do one or the other, something that made PC gamers laugh behind their keyboards and mice. Even Sony's introduction of the dual analog controller for the PlayStation 1 didn't change anything since the developers still had to code their game as if players didn't have that particular add-on. But after Bungie was bought out by Microsoft, they began to reimagine their Halo game, originally meant to be a Mac and PC title, as a console experience. Basically what made consoles different was the fact that there were less buttons and they had no ability to directly point at anything. Again, PC gamers laughed from behind their keyboards and mice. But Bungie was among the first to realize that two analog sticks largely fixed the move and aim issue. To be fair, Free Radicals Time Splitters for PlayStation 2 beat Halo by about a year, but then again, Time Splitters was never the monster success that Halo was. When Halo debuted alongside the brand new Xbox, it was the game that introduced millions of gamers to the first shooter control scheme on console that worked. Yes, there had been Goldeneye, yes, there had been Medal of Honor, and yes, there had been Time Splitters, but before Halo, consoles were all about fighting games and platformers. After Halo, the first minute shooters became the single biggest genre on consoles. Today, multi-platform shooters routinely sell better on consoles than they do on PCs. In fact, it's not considered an anomaly if a shooter sells better on PCs. In 2001, that was unthinkable. Halo made it back. So on the business side of things, Halo moves shooters from dominantly PCs to dominantly consoles. But Halo has redefined the shooter creatively as well, starting with the most integral part of any shooter namely the part that shoots, the guns themselves. Ever since the granddaddy of modern shooters, Wolfenstein, players had started with a weak and nearly useless weapon, then slowly gathered up more powerful weapons and better guns as the game progressed. He would keep all the weapons and cycle the ones he needed at will. Halo threw that philosophy out the window with what first seemed like a simple change. They only let players hold two guns. This changed everything. Now, there weren't any weak guns and strong guns. Every weapon was balanced and counterbalanced. Guns that did lots of damage, like the rocket launcher, had slow rates of fire, little ammunition, and weren't any good at close range. So suddenly, a traditionally weak weapon, like the pistol, became a necessary sidearm. Because it was good at close combat, where the launcher or the sniper rifle would be weak. No longer would there be weapons that nobody touched. Every gun had its place. And because gamers could pick any two they wanted, suddenly your weapon selection became a tactical decision. Did you want a short range weapon and a long range weapon? Or did you want two long range weapons and camp praying that no one found you? Or would you rather have two all round guns? This kind of tactical gameplay simply did not exist in early shooters, where a rush to the good guns basically defined the game. This new formula was so wildly successful that the old method is virtually unseen in today's market. Ask yourself, what the last shooter you played was, and then ask yourself how many guns you could hold at once. The answer almost certainly is two. And that's just Halo 1. Halo 2 changed gaming all over again with two major features, regenerating health and online matchmaking. Regenerating health is so prevalent in gaming today, it's hard to remember that it didn't used to exist. But before Halo 2, every game including Halo 1 either had you running around looking for a health packs or constantly checking your ever dwindling health meter. After Halo 2, almost overnight, whenever you take damage, you just take some cover, wait a minute, and are right back to full health. This system initially took a lot of flack, especially in war games where it seemed unrealistic. 
Regardless, this system is now universal, to the extent that most other genres have adopted it. And then, there was matchmaking. Again, it's hard to remember that once upon a time, nobody connected a console to the internet. If you wanted to play multiplayer, you invited your friends over and hoped you could actually see what was going on in the split screen. As with the dual analog sticks, Halo wasn't the first console to go online, but it was the one that made it sick. And what's more, it defined forever how online gameplay was structured on consoles. On PC, if you wanted to play multiplayer, your computer would do a search for servers, you'd then check out your different options and then go into the one you wanted. Each server had its own rules, but generally, there was no real structure. You just played until the timer ran out on the map. This meant that there were tons of people coming and going all the time, which meant that your score was meaningless. If you had 10 kills and the other guys have 50, that doesn't mean anything. They just have been playing on that server longer than you have. Thus, there was never any sense of your rank in a game. Halo tossed that away with a brand new idea, matchmaking. You wouldn't pick a server with its own rules, rather Bungie would come up with the map, rules, and timer, match a bunch of different players together based on their KD ratios, and then they, and only they, would play through until the victory condition was met, or the timer ran out. This meant that multiplayer wasn't a random mess of people coming and going. It was a directed, structured event with a clear start and end, clear teams and opponents, and a clear sense of winners and losers. It was absolutely addicting and has been adopted in mass by the rest of the console world. In fact, it was so good that some PC games have started to do the same. Modern Warfare 2 is a good example. Matchmaking, regenerating health, two guns, shooting on a console. It's easy to forget how new all of these are, as they are everywhere now. Just as it's easy to forget that they all came from the same franchise. In many ways, the last decade of gaming has been defined by the shift from PCs to consoles, from single player to multiplayer, from servers to matchmaking, and all of those in turn have been defined or invented by Halo. And don't forget the emerging trends of the next decade, shared films, public betas, and community created content were all introduced by Halo as well, at least onto console. Also, Bungie gave players an editor called Forge, which let gamers make their own maps and game types and share them online. And let's not forget the insane amount of stats Bungie collects from each game played, which can all be viewed on Bungie.net. Another key feature was the addition of theater mode, which lets you record and play back your games. And these features have also been adopted by other games, such as Call of Duty Black Ops. So on the surface of it, Reach doesn't seem to throw that much new into the mix. In fact, it goes a little backwards, by reintroducing the health system that won't fully regenerate and even adds recoil to the guns, making it so you can't just spray anymore. Now Halo is a rhythm game. But of course, that's probably the point. Bungie already created the mechanics that define modern gaming. With Reach, they wanted to challenge the assumptions that they created in the first place. Reach is Bungie's last Halo game, a capstone on a decade of innovation, the likes of which this industry rarely sees. Whether or not Bungie can do it again is something we will see a decade from now. This is Aymir Z. Signing out.